never want to swim with me. All right. I'm going to add one more for you. If you have any questions, you have to come up here to the front and stand to ask me the question. So if you're sitting back here, it's really difficult. So we want you to come up here so that the video has the answer and the question. And we also have a special guest with us. So I'm going to talk about a person named Frank R. Gooding. Frank R. Gooding. And that was a man who was a governor in the past. And when he finished for the government, he came here and set up a town called Gooding. No chance. Okay. Remember when I talked about the fire last time? And we moved here. We have a special visitor here, Mr. Gooding. His grandfather's name is Neil Gooding. And he, we brought the school here, and then Frank Gooding was the governor at that time, correct? Neil Gooding, his son is a brother of Frank Gooding. And FG is the signs, the initials I use for Frank Goody. Francis Robert Goody. Do you remember when we have the pictures at the front, there's two people there, and you can't read that name? Well, this is who it is. This is Frank R. Goody, FG. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right here. Leave it here. He was born in England, and he moved to America later. And his real name is Francis Robert Gooding, but he's no known as Frank. There are seven children in his family, and he was... Albert was the first, and then Frank was the second of seven children. And there's Walter, his father, which is the father of deaf Neil Goody. That's the third child, 1900 to 1937. And, that was, and he died in a car accident close to American Falls. He was the first mayor of Goody in 1908. I'll go back one. <laughs> is that the the home on 14th Street, Wilding's home, or is that home still there on 14th? Street? No, no, that that was Neil's home, one of Neil's home. So then the fourth brother, fourth child, his name is Fred, and he was an Idaho senator, Fred, and then Frank Gooding was a governor or mayor. One girl and six boys. William was, it was a wealthy farmer in Michigan. So they went to Michigan and then later to Idaho. The early life, he worked in a box factory at about the age of seven years. And he worked in a factory. Today, young children are not, not allowed to work in factories, but at that time they were. Then at the age of eight, he moved to Papa's farm in Michigan. Then at the age of 17, lived in Michigan, and it was a habit for the young children until, to stay in their parents' home until the age of 21. 
he didn't want to live there anymore at the age of 17. He wanted to move out on his own and have the freedom. So he moved to California with one of his brothers, Thomas. And then that same year, his oldest brother died. And he was about the age of 19. And they don't know how it had happened. Then he married to Amanda Thomas. They had two sons and one daughter. So they had three children. And then at that time they moved to Idaho. And Maud Rall was the first white child born in the Wood River County. Do you guys know where Wood River is? Correct. It's Sun Valley, Haley, Ketchum, Bellevue, that area. Famous ski place. But the first white baby born in that area. And then Frank Gooding went home and saw children playing with bum lambs. So the baby, she was born and then died. So who was going to care for this? The mother would die, then who was going to care for this baby sheep that was left alone? So, the, so it's very interesting, something to add. So here we have many, many sheep that you may notice. If the mother dies, then the baby's lost, and then they have to find another mother whose baby had died. So we have one baby, the mother died, and then another sheep whose baby had died, so they took the wool of the dead, dead lamb, shaved it, and put it on the lamb whose mother had died, and then brought it to the mother, hold up, and then brought it to the mother. So then the mother would think it was her own baby that had passed on, and then that mother would care for that baby. So why did the mom and baby die and they switched? Well, the mother died and left the lamb all alone, and then there was a mother whose baby had died, so they put him together. So the baby that had died, they took the wool, shaved the wool off, and put it on the live baby who didn't have a mother. And it was like kind of like an adoption type thing. So Fred Gooding said, let the children play with the lamb and take care of them. He was just... He um, found out that there was a lot of money in raising sheep and selling the wool. So he had the largest group of sheep in the um, Northwest, 100,000 sheep. Right now we only have 1,000, 2,000, but back then they had 100,000. That's a lot of sheep. Then he also was interested in cows, so he brought quite a few from England. And then he moved to Ketchum from California. And I, do you guys know what Ketchum is famous for? For mining. A lot of mining, gold and silver. So they moved there that time after California to Ketchum. Hey, he's getting after Tanner. Now, I'm trying to give a talk, Tana, and you need to behave and have some respect. So they carried mail over the Galena Summit to the Vienna Mining Section of Stanley Basin. Have you guys been there before, that big windy road up over the mountain? They had to ride horses during that time, in the summertime, and then during the wintertime, they had to have sled dogs and to get over, 
over the mountain and bring the mail to that other towns. And that lasts for seven years. Then he continued to work. He furnished wood and charcoal for the mining. He sold eggs. And they heard that there wasn't enough eggs, so he <coughs> bought chickens that laid a lot of eggs, and then he would sell them a dollar a dozen for the weekdays. You know, that's pretty good money during that time. And then $5 on Sundays. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he could sell them for a dollar a dozen. But then come a Sunday, it was $5 a dozen. The next, he hauled water. That was a dollar per barrel, Monday through Friday. Then Sundays, $5 per barrel. So that was a fast way to raise money. That's right, they were expensive. That's about the same price as today. You know, it was a lot more expensive. People didn't have eggs. So he could raise the price. Then later, Frank and Thomas, <laughs> they're good friends, and they moved and started a meat company, meat market in Ketchum. What's up? Is everything okay over there? Why um, is everybody laughing? <laughs> Okay. Huh? <laughs> so they set up a meat market in Ketchum, and later Frank became, before he became governor, he was sheriff. So he experienced many things in his life. And then the rest of the story. Go ahead, come on, you can flip it. One day while he was chopping wood, he was busy chopping it, and he made a mistake when he brought it down and it hit his leg and hit an artery. It was pretty severe. The cut was bad. He was bleeding and bleeding, so they wrapped it tightly. And he needed help, but he was all alone. So he got on his sled and the dogs. They led him to his home, and he... He had blacked out, and there was, he had reached there, but then they saw him, they came out to see what was wrong, but his leg had frozen. If it hadn't frozen, he would have bled to death, but because it was so cold, it was froze and stopped the bleeding. Then he moved to Gooding and bought property. <coughs> And the name was Toponis. And then they changed it to Gooding. Do you know where it's at, where the Gooding College was? And where Family Dollar is? Right across from Maverick, there was an old dormitory that was built there, and it was the old Gooding College. And then the buildings eventually had to be taken down. There was one left. She needs to. I asked him about the college. What kind of college was it? Was it a two-year college, a four-year college? It was a four-year college. Okay. So they had a four-year college here in Gooding and then another one in Albion. You guys know where Albion is, right? It's south of Burley. It's nothing called the Normal College. So there's nothing else all over the Northwest, just those two. Gooding College and the Normal School in Albion. That had closed down first, and then the Gooding. And then the Albion College, people had bought it and fixed it up. And it's still standing. But here it has become the bed and breakfast. But the Albion College, they're fixing it up and doing a lot of repair. You know where the river is next to the school? 
Well, he bought that area all over. There was a lot of land that he bought. He owned quite a, there's about five or six acres. He lived in Shoshone for a while. Gooding was under Lincoln County for a while. Gooding was included with the Lincoln County, and then they split it up, and it became Gooding County, this side in Lincoln County, where Shoshone is. Have you guys seen the governor's mansion? It's right next to the hamburger place there. That is where he lived. Then they split it up, and Gooding became Gooding County. And then he moved to Gooding after the town was established. Then at the age of 40, in 1899, he started a career as, as a congressman. And then he served for a total of four years. And he did a lot of work as governor for the state. Then at the age of 45, he ran for governor. So he won twice. So he was governor of Idaho. And that was during the time of Teddy Roosevelt, while he was president. Do you see that statue? It's in Boise, and it's near the government building. Right where the road split, that statue is sitting there. Did you guys know about that? Yeah, it's almost right in the middle. Why is it there? I thought it had something to do with the old deaf school up there. I thought that was because he had caught somebody, arrested somebody or something? Correct. The governor, before Frank, Stannenberg was killed. In Caldwell. And it was in Caldwell. There's what is the mining companies in Idaho? So Frank was the first who heard about this person being killed. So he hauled over there and he arrived about 9 o'clock at night and started doing some investigation, called the police, and was able to catch the person a few months later. And the name is Harry Orchard. They caught him for the assassination of Frank Stunenberg, who was assassinated and, of course, killed there in Caldwell. And he was in the state penitentiary until he died. He did want to, they gave him several opportunities to be able to be released from the state pen, but he didn't want to because he would not have any friends and he didn't know how to live outside, so he stayed in the state pen. Have many of you seen the state pen in Boise? And then one student said yes. And it, there's still the state penitentiary is there in Boise. Remember last month we learned about the fire in 1908 and Governor Frank Gooding? And he was done with his term as governor and he moved here. And he had a deaf nephew or no, nephew. nephew named Neil and you know there were 60 students without a place and they didn't know where to go 
and people had seen the fire and they didn't know what to do with the children. So different homes would took two or three children each to help take care of them. And then finally they found a hotel. It was the De La Mar Hotel. Remember I showed you the picture last month. in front of the motel on a picture. Remember that? So then the hotel was just a few blocks from the old school that had burnt down. So that's where they went to school for a while. And then at the age of 52, Frank opened the Lincoln Inn. It's not here in town anymore, the original building, because it was burned down as well. And that was in 1909. Now we have another one called the Lincoln Inn, and then they change it to the Taponis, across from the old movie house. It used to be set up there where the new one is, and it looked like that. And it was $61,000. He opened it on Abraham Lincoln's birthday, February 12th. That is Abraham's, Abraham Lincoln's birthday. So he opened it in 1909, February 12th. In honor of Abraham Lincoln. To honor Abraham Lincoln. Well, it was a Lincoln Inn. They changed it to the Taponis Times. Well, you guys need to come forward if you're going to comment, please. So we can voice it for all and so all can see what you sign. Thank you for helping me out. So you know where the hotel is now? You know where the bar is and then that restaurant? Is that where it was before? Yeah, across from the old old theater, right across from there. That's where it was located. The, yeah, just west of it, where that motel is now. Is that where it was before? Yes. He called his friends from the from when he was governor in Boise, you know, to come on the train. So they would arrive here. At one time, we had four hotels here in Gooding. The Lincoln Inn. You know where Zeppi's is? That parking area? That was another hotel there. And then across from the post office, where that apartment building in is, that used to be a hotel. And then... The Gooding, there's a business there, a bed and breakfast. That was a hotel as well, the Gooding Bed and Breakfast. So Gooding was a very famous town. A lot of people would stop and visit Gooding. So we've already explained this, but we'll say some more on it. He had a huge celebration. And it, have you guys ever heard of the word Pierce Arrow? It was the only car here in Gooding. So he arrived in his Pierce Arrow and everybody was just thrilled to see the first car. And he talked to people and he had the keys and he threw them across the street. And the Lincoln Hotel from then on was open. So why did the man with the keys throw the keys? Oh, because we didn't need keys. He threw the keys across the street to get rid of them because it would be open. The hotel will always be open morning and night. It was open 24-7, so they didn't need the keys. One thing that's interesting, that hotel, wow, boy, was it fancy. It was it was one of the best here in the country. It had velvet furniture, 
velvet flooring, marble flooring. Marble flooring. <laughs> and everything was imported from France. And the food was from China. And all the waiters and waitresses were black. All of the waitresses and waiters were black. And really fascinating. So where are they now? So where are all the black people now? If there was all, if there was so many that was here. Yeah. That was way back then. Interesting. So we had the cinema, and that was the opera house, and a lot of fancy clothes were brought from Chicago to show for the operas. This was really a famous town at one point in history. I first started teaching in, and then the Lincoln Inn had the fire, and it was burnt down. So it had burnt down, so they had to close the motel. Wow. So 1960, the year that he far, first started working, was the fire. <laughs> so Frank Gooding did a lot of work here for the irrigation system to bring water here. It was a really dry desert area. So we had the river that went through town. We had the Big Wood River and the Little Wood River. And they both go right through Gooding, one out in the country and one through the center of town. That still was not enough water, so they worked really hard with a canal company to set up Magic Reservoir. And the Milner Dam was set up on the Snake River. And that had to go to Shoshone and Gooding and all over the area, Dietrich. So we had a large reservoir, the Magic Reservoir, and that was, Frank Gooding was involved in getting that set up to be able to bring water to this area, and I, that was one of the first in the area. So it, the water... So the water traveled up to 50 miles to arrive at the different towns. Magic Reservoir is, wow, it's big. And so the we have, water comes from the big river. and the water is from the Big Wood River, <laughs> to be able to water the farms. And I'm not for sure where, but there was a time that they had made some cheese here. They had a factory. It was a cooperative creamery, and it was located somewhere on Main Street, but I'm not for sure where. So during the time that Frank was governor, Weezer and Boise wanted to move the school, so they had a big discussion of where to put the school. So Frank Gooding just waited for all of that argument to be done, and then he finally donated 20 acres of his own land to ISDB to, to solve the problem between Boise and, we Boise and Weezer. Economy. 
So we now have the cottages, the round building, and where the school is, that was 20 acres. And then he built one mile of sidewalk from the train station all the way here to the state school so the students could walk. Built a sidewalk? Wow! On the east side, so the west side, we didn't need the sidewalk, but on the east side, he built it from the train tracks all the way to the college. So if you notice the sidewalk that you see out there, that was built during that time. The, we had the first school building here, and it was called the main. the main building. And we moved from Boise to here in 1910. It had the basement, which had the kitchen and the dining room. Then the main floor had the offices and the classrooms. And then, sorry, there was just three floors. And then the upper floor was the dormitory. And there was a division. One side was girls and the other side was boys. I think the girls was on the west side of the building and the boys on the east, but it was divided and they had their own way up and down the stairs on their side of the building. And there was 41 deaf and 13 blind students. And when Boise had opened, there was just 13. We had six teachers and one superintendent and one matron that washed the clothes and fixed the food. The population during that time was 1,100. So, hey, how many people are in Gooding now? What's the population of Gooding now? Anybody know? He's all, he knows all the questions over here, Tanner does. 6,000? 3,600. 3,600, gosh. <laughs> so that's... They come from all over the magic now, I think. You know. From Newport to Blind Story, all this area, and all those towns, all in between. Oh. All those little tiny towns. <laughs> like 33? So there's 33 towns Bliss, Hagerman, all those little towns. And Gooding is the seventh. Seventh largest. Seventh largest. Hang on, say five. 3,000, that's small. But compared to all of the lands around, we are not as small. Twin Falls is the biggest. Then second is Jerome. Third is Burley. Buell. Haley. Goody. So really, it's a fairly decent-sized town for all of Idaho, if you think about it, for this area, anyway. So the Gooding College was established in 1917. Um, it, uh, it opened up as a Methodist, under the Methodist Church. It ran for about 20 years and then it was closed down. <laughs> then when Frank ran for the U.S. Senate. Here, wait, I have some U.S. I have some important information. So he competed and he lost to another man. Why do you think? Because he was not a naturalized citizen. So where was he born? Do you remember where he was born? That's correct, in England. And then he moved here and he had not yet taken up the test to become a citizen of the U.S. So he can be governor and he didn't know that. He got a mistake. How he became governor, he didn't know because he shouldn't have been able to. But then when he ran for Senate, uh... And that's when he learned and realized that he shouldn't have been governor and he had to pass the test. <laughs> then he became a citizen and won the election. So how did that? Yeah. How did he become governor? How did they not know that, that he wasn't born here? It just was passed by, but they should have. It just was overlooked for some reason. Okay. Frank Gooding. The only oh, governor that was not an American citizen. 
not an authorized citizen when he was governor. Yeah. But he had to have been. He should have been a citizen, but it was overlooked. So he is the only one. That yeah, was a little mistake, but... And then he died while he was... The, when he was the age of 68, while he was a senator. And he is buried here in town. There's a whole section for the Gooding family. And his burial site is right there. His wife, brothers, sisters. Neil Gooding is buried there as, all, as well with his wife. And he has a niece or a nephew and their wife that was buried there. Time's up. Okay, let's get to the next slide. Frank Goody was really a strong man. He was a very religious man, though, at the same time. So that's it for today, and we'll see you next month.